The reason I didn't put together a step-by-step -step process, meaning like step one, do this, step two, do that, step three, do that, is because I don't think there is one. I don't think there is a blanketed step-by-step -step process that I could give to all of you that would make sense for your organizations. In some organizations, this is going to start from the top down. In others, it's going to start from the bottom up. In other organizations, it'll come from marketing. Some, it'll come from sales. Others, will come from IT. So depending on where all this is coming from, the steps in the process you're going to take is different, which is why I didn't want to put together a step one, step two, step three process. Instead, I thought it would be more effective to put together a list of things that you should consider, discussions that you should have, things that you should be thinking about. The first thing is acknowledge the change in culture and technology. Right? Acknowledge that this shift has happened. Culture has changed, technology has shifted. I don't think anybody here needs convincing of that. I don't think anybody anywhere needs to be convinced of that. Ask your kids what they're using. Ask, ask anybody younger what they're doing. I have an 18-year-old brother uh, who's already making YouTube videos, building websites, creating content online. Is my 18-year-old brother going to use something like Salesforce? Yeah, the chances are probably not, right? Next, who's going to be driving this? Somebody at your organization needs to take the reins to make this happen. Usually somebody at the tactical level and somebody higher up on the manager level. If it's a CEO, great. If it's a VP, great. But it needs to be someone on the top level that is willing to take ownership of this and say, this is my responsibility, I will make sure that it happens. Next is what resources do you have to allocate? A lot of people come to you and they say, oh, you know, to make this happen, it's going to be a kajillion bajillion dollars, we've got to rechange your whole company, and it's, you know, it's going to take five years. If you don't have the resources to make that happen, then don't do it. It's what I like to call the true but useless problem. It's very easy to pinpoint the things that need to be fixed, but oftentimes the truth isn't always something that you can actually deal with. Some companies need to be completely revamped. That's great. Are they actually going to do it? Probably not. So what resources do you have to allocate this in terms of people, in terms of budget, in terms of time? Next is how is success going to be measured? If you have salespeople that are being measured based on how many phone calls they make a day, and you give them these types of social tools, it's not going to add up, right? Because they're not going to be making these phone calls anymore. So how are you going to change the way you value your employees? What tools are you going to be using? Where do your B2B customers exist? It might be Twitter. It might be Facebook, it might be message boards, it might be who knows where. Develop guidelines for engagement. So what are you going to do? Right? How are you going to guide your employees and what sort of best practices or, or, or frameworks or processes are you going to put in front of them? My favorite example for this, did anybody hear about what happened with Nestle and Greenpeace when they created their Facebook page not so long ago? Anybody? So Nestle decided to create a Facebook fan page. Um, and they, they clearly didn't think through the guidelines piece. So they created their Facebook fan page. They thought, eh, chocolate, everybody's going to love us. Within 24 hours, Greenpeace just attacked them and said, you guys are gorilla killers and baby killers and you're using palm oil. And their Facebook fan page just got destroyed. Of the whole, all the comments were about how horrible they were and how evil they are. <laughs> what made it worse was that the employee that was in charge for managing that community was egging them on, <laughs> right? He not, now, he wasn't going out there saying, hey, you guys, you can't get any blah, blah, blah. But he was saying stuff like, oh, you know, that's inappropriate. You can't alter our logo to make it part of your avatar. He was basically doing these like, little irritating things to people that were complaining about you know, gorillas being killed and babies being killed. And he's talking about like an avatar. So you can see that common sense, did the employee technically do anything wrong? No. You know, he was using his best judgment, even though it might not have been that great, but he was using his best judgment. Right? There were no policies, there were no rules put in place for how he needs to be able to interact with people on that space. And next is empower employees. Your employees are the most powerful force that you have to succeed at your company. Give them the tools they need, give them the support they need, give them the training they need, and make sure you evaluate them accordingly. So that's it for me. This is where you guys can find me. Um, you can email me. You can uh, I, I tweet and talk a lot. Uh, so Jacob M on Twitter, and I blog at socialbusinessadvisor.com where I talk a lot about uh, all this type of stuff. So if anybody has any questions, comments, anything at all, please. Yes. Short description.